Meiosis is when cells divide to form gametes, which are the sperm and egg in humans and have only half the number of chromosomes. For example, in us humans, we all have 46 chromosomes in each somatic cell in our bodies, but for gametic cells, there are only 23 chromosomes. This makes sense because during sexual reproduction, one sperm and one egg come together to make a zygote, which has 46 chromosomes. Meiosis is basically the process of mitosis doubled. That's how we get only half the number of chromosomes. So there are two cell divisions in meiosis, and they're called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is when homologous chromosomes separate from each other. So let's take a closer look at it. Here's what it looks like when prophase 1 occurs. Let's say that the red chromosomes are the ones from the mother and the blue chromosomes are from the father. The same chromosomes from each of the parents pair up and form this complex called a tetrad. The chromosomes are kind of like rag dolls since they're so small and unsteady, and they don't necessarily stay as these perfect X shapes. They kind of flop around like this, and because this happens, the chromosomes can cross over each other. When crossing over occurs, the chromosomes can exchange genetic material. This is a major mechanism for genetic variation because if you think about it, you don't look exactly like one of your parents. Maybe you'll look more like one than the other, but of course, crossing over and meiosis as a whole ensure that you'll get genes from both parents. Now, in metaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes or tetrads will line up at the metaphase plate like in mitosis. Then, in anaphase 1, the chromosomes from each parent are pulled apart from each other towards the opposite poles by the centrioles. During telophase and cytokinesis, the resulting chromosomes will be separated into two different cells. Notice that these consequential cells aren't exactly the same like in mitosis because of crossing over and different genes from parents. Alright, so let's move on to prophase 2. This is basically when mitosis starts because the spindle starts to form, and in metaphase 2, the chromosomes line up at the metaphase plate again. Anaphase 2 is when the centrioles pull the sister chromatids apart, and telophase 2 results in four different gametic cells. Now we see that there are plenty of ways for genetic variation due to crossing over and two other mechanisms called independent assortment and random fertilization. Independent assortment refers to the fact that tetrads can line up at the metaphase plate independently and randomly. For instance, the chromosomes here can line up with all the father's genes on this side, or on this side, or all jumbled up like this. This leads to many different possibilities of what the four resulting cells will look like. In random fertilization is pretty self-explanatory since any human sperm can fuse with a human ovum, leading to a humongous number of different genetic variations. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my mitosis and binary fission video and I hope to see you soon.